1998 was a great year for the PC as a gaming platform. We received a stream of phenomenal games with some great sequels as well as franchises just starting out that will go on to span decades. It was in the middle of the first true golden era of PC gaming and groundbreaking titles seemed to start getting drawn to the flexibility a PC offered, especially on a strategy and simulation front which was something that was often coming short on consoles. That is not to say the first person shooter at this point was Inferno Planet by now, and many LAN parties with non-stop fragging were enjoyed across the globe and even played online. 1998 was also the year that 3 Defects launched their iconic Voodoo 2 video card. Building on the success of the Voodoo 1 just a couple of years earlier, on the launch it was THE video card to have. 3D acceleration was truly taken off, and while there was competition brewing for 3D effects when the Voodoo 2 launched, nothing else even came close. So looking back at this computer for part 1 of this two part series, it's about to get a major shot of adrenaline. Welcome back to Rick Strand Retro, where we do love the voodoo that you do. So, as a quick recap, in part 1 we went over this AMD K62 300MHz computer. It's centered around the Socket 7 motherboard from TechRam and at the moment doesn't have much in the way of gaming chops. While the S3 Verge 4MB card is a good choice for DOS gaming, it leaves a lot to be desired for pure 3D game performance, but don't worry, we'll still give it a spin. But let's take a look at what's left to do with this machine and of course those upgrades. First off, to deal with the power switch situation I ordered this cable that will allow us to use our now ATX powered computer with a mechanical switch. This is an AT style case so the old power switch that was in there is a literal mechanical breaker to turn the power supply on or off. Our ATX power supply doesn't work quite that way and just needs a momentary on signal which this adapter will provide for us. But it still retains that satisfying click. Next we'll be adding the crown piece to all this which is a 3D Blaster Voodoo 2 8MB video card. If you're watching this odds are you're familiar with the Voodoo 2 but as a quick overview it's a 3D only card from the now gone company 3DFX launched in 1998. The idea was that in normal operation your regular video card did the work until the Voodoo was called upon to do the heavy lifting in a 3D application. While in 2D mode the Voodoo is connected in bypass mode and stays passive. When the Voodoo is called upon by an application it overrides the 2D card and runs the show. This is all done through what is called the Glide API which is similar to what you might recognize in something like DirectX. For audio we'll be using what is probably the gold standard for the era. Get it? Gold stand. Anyway, this is a Sound Blaster AW64 Gold. A somewhat enhanced version of the original AW64 and at least from my understanding may be one of the most compatible sound cards so this looking at Sound Blasters. The ISA configuration should allow us to play true DOS games as well which will expand the use for this machine even further. If you're unfamiliar why that is good in our case, to get true audio compatibility in DOS you'll want an ISA card due to how it's accessed by the computer. PCI has to do it virtually so there are options there but ISA is definitely preferred. With adding more horsepower under the hood and a pretty minor amount of airflow coming through this case I'd like to do something about that to improve it a bit. Looking at the front of the case we have a spot to mount one 80mm fan so we're going to go ahead and do that as well. The Voodoo 2 is passively cool but certainly can build up a bit of heat when running at full speed. Lastly we'll add in a network card as well. This is your standard type of 3 com adapter for the era. For how I use these retro machines having a network card is very handy and by far the quickest way to transfer large files on and off the machines. Well that and the ability to play LAN games of course. So then, these are all the components we're installing. Let's get to it. Well, first let's start off by taking care of the front panel issues. First we have to get rid of this, uh, yeah, this power switch is not uh, working very well here. So we're going to take that out, see if we can keep track of where things go. So it's the fun part with these panels. So that's out. We're going to replace it then with the, uh, the new power switch that I have over here somewhere. Nice clicky action. Uh, we have to remove the front panel as well to uh, gain access to that. So let's go ahead and take that out. Come on. There we go. Try not to break it in the process. Perfect. Kind of pop this out here. Kind of see here, this is where uh, this new switch will go, which is basically the same place as the old one was. 
As you can see, it has some extra bracket here that we actually have to take off first so it actually fits in the case. Go ahead and undo that. Just got an adapter plate that makes it work with different cases, so. Really all interested in uh, this actual part here. Let's see if I can uh, fish that in here now. Come on. I almost got it. There we go. I just need to get the screw in there without dropping them. <laughs> Magnetic screwdriver comes in hand. Kind of need an extra arm here, I think. There we go. That's attached. Hey. Nice clicky sound. We got a working uh, power switch. Not working. It's not plugged in yet, but. It is actually installed in the case, so that's a pretty good start. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the uh, fan in the front here. Where the heck I put that? Too many things to keep track of. Anyway, just a case fan. Since we're going to be installing Voodoo 2, we're going to have a lot of uh, more heat generated in here. And I wanted something to actually pull air through the case, so we're going to install that in the front. This uh, is a kind of like a... Let's see if I can detach this. It's supposed to be a comes loose pretty easy kind of fan cage, but there we go. Holds a PC speaker and also then room for a fan. I can dislodge it. Come on, there we go. All right, we have our PC speaker attached here, but then also a place for us to kind of slot in the fan. So. Undo this. So that comes with two different power connectors. We'll probably use the, uh, the full size one here. Unless we have another uh, power connector on the motherboard, I don't think so. Alright, so we need to install it like this, and we want it to uh, pull in air. So we're going to install it in this configuration. Yeah, let's make sure that the uh, power cable is actually accessible. I think we're going to pop it in like this. It's a pretty nice mechanism here. It allows us to uh, install this screwless, basically. Now we have an extra fan here we can put back in the front. So the speaker is unplugged. Uh, I had to uh, disconnect that when I was messing with it. So we're going to plug that in here back in a minute. Let's see if I can get an angle here where we can actually see this going on. You can see the front panel there where this is going to sit. Now that's installed there. Nice little fan in the front. Awesome. There, now we can go ahead and put back the front cover plate again. And now our prop button should actually work since we have that installed there. Ooh, that's a nice clicky sound. Sweet. I've already connected the uh, speaker wire to the uh, motherboard, but we do have the power uh, button here. That's actually a turbo LED. We don't need that guy. We need the uh, power switch, otherwise we can't turn our computer on. So I'm going to plug that in here, which I think was the right spot. We'll find out later when we power back on. These things are always real tricky to get to, but there we go. Uh, that should be it there. Next, we have to, uh, well, install our Voodoo 2 card. It's the big one. Uh, now, due to the space constraints in this case here, we're going to have to put it right in between here. I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but that's really the only spot it can go uh, due to the immense length of this card. But it does slot in there just fine. There. It even kind of holds up our uh, little uh, um, adapter we have here for the uh, SD card adapter. Let's get that in there. That's not going anywhere. 
Next we have our uh, network card. That is going to go in the last PCI slot down here under the VGA card. Get it sorted in there. It's always more difficult to install it than this angle than this uh, putting the computer down on the table, but here we are. All right, I think that's in there. And go ahead and get that installed. Nice. Lining up all the expansion cards here now. And lastly, of course, we're going to install our, uh, it's upside down, Sound Blaster, edit, <laughs> Sound Blaster EW64 Gold. That's going to go in the ISO slot down here. I don't want to put it on the bottom one, and the one above it doesn't have enough room because of the processor. Getting, uh, pretty cramped in there, which again, why I wanted that fan in the front there, just provide a little extra airflow. Let's rack it just a little bent, let's see if we can figure it out. It's almost worse to install these things, like mentioned, because of the camera angles and just to put the computer straight down. So I'll have to figure out something with that. There we go. Nice. That card is in there as well. So we have all our expansion cards uh, hooked up here. So that should do it for those cards. Let's go to the next step. Now we have a couple of things left to do. Uh, first off, we do have, you know, whoop, open slot there. So I'm actually going to put a real bracket in there. It says Dell on it, sorry, but it's what I have on hand. Uh, it's nice to seal it up properly to get a nice airflow going here. And I don't always do this, but it's nice to finish it up when you can. There we go. I should seal the back there. Next, right now, uh, we don't have any CD audio. Well, we're going to fix that one of these standard cables. So the one cable goes in the sound card like that. And the other one, let's see if I can reach this cable here now. It's going to fish up to our CD-ROM drive. Like that. We'll uh, run that up a little bit there. This way, when you're playing uh, CD-based games or uh, just listening to music in general from CDs, this can actually uh, handle that. So pipes to the sound card and you get that out through the speakers. All right, I think we're ready to button this thing up. Our computer is now fully built, but we'll need an OS. Since we have that handy SD card adapter, we can simply take our card to our modern computer, format it, and drop the OS files on it so it's ready to go. As far as the OS, then yes, we'll be running Windows 98 since this is our 1998 gaming rig, but I'm going to go with the release version of 98 for this one. I have many computers that run 98SE, which is arguably better in many ways, but I really wanted to do something different here and try and stay true to that 1998 year where I could. So we're going to go with the retail version of the first edition of Windows 98. There's something still quite soothing when installing a classic version of Windows yet to this day. Watching the progress bars and the promise of a fresh computer. I like grabbing a beverage, settling down, and watching some lines race across the screen. Delectable.
After a while of progress ball racing and driver installation, we now have a gaming machine ready to go. As far as the final specs, as a reminder we have an AMD K62 running at 300MHz with a 66MHz bus speed. Memory is a single stick of 64MB SIM RAM, which could go higher, but that's what I have on hand and I would say it's actually period accurate. We're using a 16GB microSD card ID adapter in place of a hard drive. The video cards are a S3 Verge DX coupled with a 3D Blaster Voodoo 2 8MB. Our sound card is the Sound Blaster AW64 Gold. You probably also noticed that the CD-ROM drive isn't the same. Well, the replacement drive I used actually was also having problems. So that's two down and third time's the charm. This one is slightly newer than I'd like, but it's still one from 2000. It works great, so I'm not going to let that hold anything up. Which is all well and good, but how about those games then, right? Let's get into some 1998 games for our 1998 gaming rig. You must have known this was coming, right? Nothing screens Voodoo 2 to me more than the opening to Unreal. More time than I care to admit was spent watching the screen roll by as I continually tweaked and tried to squeeze more performance out of my computer back in the day. This game is still a treat to play today and it's easy to see the influence it had on later games in both the visual areas and environment storytelling. While it's easy to knock it for not running fully smooth, I think it's more representative in how we played the game back in the day. This game, I believe, earned the title of most bundle game in history. If you bought a video card any time during this era, odds are it was packed in alongside. An arcade title that's actually not that bad, but doesn't exactly run deep. Incoming has you defeat wave after wave of bad guys all set against a gorgeous, for the time, lit up environment. Colored lights and shaded areas are plentiful, and it really was a showcase title for 3D graphics. Obviously there is plenty of fun to be had outside of 3D games as well, and if you like role-playing games, I can't think of any better ones from 1998 than the first game in Bioware's epic saga, Baldur's Gate. A game that cut deep into the Dungeons & Dragons rulebook, it was a new era of approachable yet very deep RPGs. I spent so much time in this one optimizing everything and trying to make the best party possible. Plus, it features miniature space hamsters. A true classic. I wonder. Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Going back to the FPS genre in 1998, Valve gave us maybe one of the greatest all time classics with Half Life. Truly a trend-setting game that redefined how a story can be told in an action game where most FPS entries to this point consisted of good guy, bad guy, and gun, Half-Life went beyond. The level of immersion you got creeping around dimly lit hallway, solving environmental puzzles as you go along was something entirely new. I remember being blown away when this game came out and I think it still holds up. The Voodoo 2 handles this game really well, again considering the time period we're in. Blizzard basically invented an entirely new sport at the launch of StarCraft. The fine-tuned skills required to win a match was something else and the depth of strategic gameplay was something we hadn't seen in RTS at this point. What really sucked me in was the atmosphere and the engrossing story, however, which is something Blizzard is now synonymous with. 
The polish and balance of this game was above and beyond, and if I recall right, based on how long it took to get this out, Blizzard became famous for the when it's done answer on the release date for their games. The wait was worth it though. Let's not forget that in the previous video I did say we'd try out the S3 video card acceleration as well. And here is Pod riding in the S3D mode. Not many games supported this API at all, and here in Pod it looks very similar to software if I'm going to be honest. One thing to note is the sky has sort of a fog effect on it which is missing in software mode. Overall the use case for the S3 mode is so minimal it won't see much use, but it's an interesting note either way. So, back to those picks from 1998, which I think was a fantastic year for PC gaming as a whole. So many classics, and so little time as we just scratched the surface of what that year had to offer. What you see here is a small selection of some of the games I happen to have, which by themselves are awesome, but some obvious ones I'm missing were just as great. Take a look at what games came out that year and you'll see what I mean. If we venture out earlier or later, we find even more amazing games waiting to be discovered. As far as retro machines go, let's just say you can get a lot of mileage out of a retro rig like this. And I want to address what components actually make this machine up as well. Is it the most powerful PC from the time? No. Is it maxing out that Voodoo 2 card? Not at all, it can scale even higher with a faster processor. However, I think it's fun to build and use something that would have been realistic to have for the era. With some modern concessions, of course, looking at our hard drive solution as well as power supply. Beyond that, this is likely a good representation of someone with a decent computer deciding to throw in a Voodoo card to get a big bump in performance. I bet these specs were more common than above and beyond overkill ones uh, we might have access to these days. It's fun to max out retro machines, but sometimes it's just as fun to keep things more period accurate. I love this build, honestly. It's not the fastest, it's not the best, but dang if it just isn't great. Not least in nostalgia, but it's an awesome machine in a fairly small package. Let's not forget either that we didn't really cover many DOS games here, but with that ISA sound card, a really good quality 2D card, and a powerful processor, this thing will handle any of your late DOS titles with ease. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough, so we're going to finish things up here. I hope you enjoyed this two-part build series featuring the 1998 gaming rig as much as I did making it and plan on enjoying it going forward. Again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my other ones. If you'd like to catch me live, be sure to tune in at 8.45pm Central on Thursdays for my weekly livestream. Otherwise, see you for the next video.